Hi, I'm Gene Merritt with Bearings and Drives, and today we're shooting an instructional video on an SAF style split house pillow block in the fixed and in the float fashion. Um, today we're using spherical roller bearings with a tapered bore, but understand this can also be done with a self aligning double row ball bearing. Um, one thing I want to point out is always to locate the floating block the furthest away from the drive, also known as the expansion block. Part two of our instructional video is the introduction of all the components of the SAF fixed and float pillow box, as well as the tools required to assemble it. We'll start here with the fixed block. We have our outboard LER seal. We have our bearing lock nut, bearing lock washer, stabilizing ring, Spherical roller bearing. The bottom half of the SAF block or the saddle. The bearing adapter sleeve. And the inboard LER seal. The cap. I want you to take note too. There's alignment holes, there's pins and female holes on the cap. Then we move on to the float side. Again, we have our cap, our inboard LER seal, our bearing adapter sleeve, the spherical roller bearing, the bottom half of the block or the saddle, Bearing lock washer, bearing lock nut, and the outboard LER seal. And now for the tools for the assembly, you'll need a set of feeler blades or gauges. You need a properly sized torque wrench, ball peen hammer, spanner wrench, some light oil, and a pin punch or drift pin. Okay, part three of our instructional video is to uh, locate all of the components on the fixed side of the SAF style split house pillow block. I want to show you guys one thing while we're doing this, um, and I would advise you to do the same thing when you're installing these. Um, take some time and lay out the shaft where the bearings are going to be mounted onto it. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier when you start setting things, and you can uh, set the bearings onto the shaft um, prior to installing them into the blocks. So uh, let's get started here. We're going to start um, with our inboard LER seal. And the one thing you always want to do is put a little bit of lubrication on the seals on all the mating surfaces so they slide on a little bit easier. So we'll take a little oil. We'll put it inside the seal. Take your finger, rub it around a little bit, and uh, just slide it onto the shaft. We actually have the markings lined up on there, and uh, it should go pre pretty easy. We want to take the bearing adapter sleeve, same thing, a little bit of oil inside of it. Slide that on. We're right on to our markings. And now we're going to take our spherical roller bearing. Note, these only go on one way. The taper must match the taper of the adapter sleeve. Um, so when we slide it on, it's going to come all the way up. And you'll notice that it slides right up and the thread should be sticking out on the outboard side. Now, when we go to take the clearance out of the bearing, we're actually not going to put the lock washer on yet. We're going to put the lock nut on first. And the reason for that is that the, uh, the lock nut and the bearing are machine surfaces. The lock washer is uh, stamped steel. So we're going to be taking clearances out here. So we're going to talk about clearances a little bit. Um, the unmounted clearance of this bearing right here, you look into a chart, is 0 .0037 or 37 thousandths to 47 thousandths. Um, we're gonna check the unmounted clearance of this one with our feeler blades, and it should be right around 40 thousandths. So you take your feeler blade, 40 thousandths, and we're just gonna slide it in between the OD of the race and the roller bearing. Right there is about 40 thousandths. 
We're then going to take our, uh, our spanner wrench and we're going to take the clearance out of the bearing. So when you look into the chart, the chart says that you need to take out about 15 thousandths. So um, 40 thousandths minus 15 thousandths is 25 thousandths and 25 thousandths filler blade. What you're going to do is take your spanner wrench, put it onto your nut, and we're going to start tightening this nut down until it locks onto the shaft. We're going to go back with our feeler blades, take the 25 thousandths one, same as when we checked for the clearance in the bearing, and we're just going to put it in there and feel it, and it should feel nice and snug like that. Now the bearing is locked to the shaft, and the clearance has been taken out of it. We can then take our wrench, spanner wrench, break the nut back loose again so we can install the lock washer. Take note, the lock washer has a little tang in it. That's going to slip right into a slot on the adapter sleeve. And then reinstall the nut again. Take note that when you're putting this nut on, you're not looking to tighten it up again. You're just looking in to get it up against the face of the bearing and the lock washer. And then we're going to try to line up one of the tangs to hold the nut from spinning backwards. If it doesn't line up correctly, we are going to take it and tighten it up a little bit. We don't want to loosen the nut. We we'll tighten it up by hand. You note that we're not into one of the sleeves here or one of the slots, so we'll just spin it. We didn't get one, so we're going to take our wrench, tighten up a smidge, get right into one of the slots. Then you're going to take your ball peen hammer and your pin punch. You're just going to bend down one of the tabs into the slot. Now the bearing has been mounted, the clearance has been taken out, and you need your last LER seal to go on the outboard side. Again, a little bit of oil on here. And that's the fixed position is mounted. Okay, part four of our instructional video is to locate all the components on the floating side of the SAF style split house pill block. Identical to the fixed side, um, we're going to start off with a little bit of light oil and our inboard LER seal. Again, the oil is just there for the ease of assembly. We're going to get our bearing adapter sleeve. Again, a little bit of oil. This is a vertical roller bearing. Again, only goes on one way. We're going to leave off the lock washer again, right to the lock nut to take out the clearance of the bearing again. Again, when you look at the chart for your manufacturer of the bearing, you'll notice this right here was a 037 to 047 uh, thousandths of clearance in the bearing. We're going to confirm that. Take our feeler blades again. Go right in between the outer race and the roller. Nice snug fit at 40 thousandths. And our book tells us to take out 15 thousandths, which takes us down to 25 thousandths. Again, we'll take the spanner wrench. Lock it to the shaft. And we'll come back and check that we do have the clearance taken out of the bearing with our 25 thousandths feeler blade. Nice and snug in there. Perfect. We're then going to take the lock nut back off so we can install the locking uh, washer. Again, the locking washer has a tab in it. It's going to slide right into the adapter sleeve. And then we're going to take our lock nut, screw it back onto the adapter, and again, we're going to try to line up one of the tangs or tabs 
with one of the slots in the nut. This one's definitely proven to be a little harder. Again, tighten it up until we get it. We're not looking to take any more clearance out of the bearing. We're just looking to line up one of the tangs with one of the slots. We'll turn it. We got one right here that's perfect. Take our pin punch and our hammer. On the tab, knock it into the slot on the lock nut. And then we want to install our outboard LER seal, again with a little bit of oil. And that's the float side uh, mounted on the shaft. Part five of our instructional video uh, is the assembly of the SAF split house pillow box in the fixed or in the float fashion. Um, on the floating block or the expansion block, the bearing needs to be located in the middle of the saddle. It's very important for the bearing to be in there so it can float if there's any expansion in the shaft. On the flick side, or the non-expansion block, the bearing needs to be located on the shoulder on the inboard side to allow for clearance for the stabilizing ring, or the stab ring as we like to call it. So I want to point out the uh, inboard shoulder of the fixed block. That's where the bearing will sit up against. And then we highlight it in white here, but there's a casting mark here. And that's actually where you're going to fill the grease level to. Okay, now we're going to install the assembly into the blocks, and at this time I'll ask for some assistance. Be careful here not to damage the LER seals when you lower it into the housing. We're trying to get the float right in the center. Now we have the assembly in. What we want to do is you look at the float. You'll notice it's pretty close to the center of the bearing or the bolt holes here. And we want the fixed side to be all the way over up against the block. Okay, now that we have the assembly in, um, on the fixed side, we need to install the stabilizing ring or the stab ring. You want to make sure that the bearing is all the way towards the inboard side against the shoulder. Slide over, take the stabilizing ring. Drop it in over top of the nut, spin it 180 degrees, and that will lock or fix that bearing in place there. Next thing you want to do is you want to install the top half or the cap of the block. Again, take note, there's alignment pins, there's female holes. Drop it over, hand tighten it, and then we're going to torque these down to 110 foot-pounds of torque for the spec in the book. And that's both for the fixed and the float. Again, take note, alignment pin. Take our torque wrench. Set to 110 foot-pounds. Take it and lock it up. Okay, to recap on our instructional video of the SAF style split house pillow block, the floating, the expansion of the knot held unit is always the furthest away from the drive. So we have our drive unit, we have our fixed bearing, the stabilizing ring, uh, over top of the lock nut side. And then we have our floating unit. Um, the floating unit always needs to be in the center of the saddle, um, as close as you can get it in there. And the floating is always the furthest away from the drive. This bearing is always mounted in the center of the saddle.